Well, that's strange. It is a really great time to be a geek, especially if you're into lasers. It seems like every week there's a new laser coming out that has a higher power output, better features, built better, and the price is coming down and making it more accessible for a lot of people that want to get into this hobby slash business for a lot of us. It's really difficult to objectively say which laser is best. There's so many factors that come into play. The speed of the laser, the power output, the size, and the type of laser. They all contribute to a different experience with the machine. And your personal needs might not be the same as everybody else's. So for today, we're gonna to test one aspect of those different lasers and different types of lasers, and that is speed. So today we're gonna to be testing the Rotura Alfaro Laser 2, the Xtool D1, the Glowforge Basic, and I'm even bringing out of retirement the K40. About time, nuthead. Ah! So we're gonna take a look at the top speed of each machine, at least really close to the advertised top speed. Now the top speed of each machine is locked off by the software sometimes, and sometimes it's locked off by the machine. So we'll talk about those two differences once we get to that point. And then we're gonna take a look at the image output of each machine. Now, part of this is gonna be based on personal preference and what you're looking for in that final image, but We'll take a look at those differences. In addition, I also want to say this right now, is that these machines are very different. They have different power outputs and they work in slightly different ways. They use different software. So running a test this way isn't going to be 100% accurate, but a little bit more of an approximation. I'll talk about those differences. And I did try to line them up as closely as possible in terms of the ability of the machine compared to the other three. So instead of just showing you the tests right now of each machine, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all four final results up on the screen. I'm not going to tell you which one is from which machine, and I'm going to have you choose which one you like best based on that one static image. Do you like A, B, C, or D? In addition to that, maybe make a prediction of which machine produced that result, and then see if you were right later on. Got your guess? Okay, let's take a look at the tests. All right, so I have the results of all four machines. You saw a little bit of the time lapse of each one. And I'm just gonna kinda of go in the order that they were created and talk about some of the items or issues with each of the lasers and in comparison to each other um, as well. So the first one is from the Alfaro Laser 2. So Alfaro Laser 2 has the highest advertised speed, which is up to 15,000 millimeters a minute. I don't like that top speed, um, so I dropped it down to 10,000 millimeters a minute, which I thought was still pretty reasonable. Now, something different that you need to be aware of is 10,000 millimeters a minute is not the same way that most of the lasers are advertised. Most of them are advertised in millimeters per second. So converted down, this comes out to about 250 millimeters a second. And if you, if you wanna check my math, you can, but I'm pretty sure that's about accurate. Which is still pretty fast. The clock time came out around, I believe, 10 minutes. I'll have to double check the, the footage on that. But the image quality is really, really good. 
It's probably one of the better image qualities as well. It's definitely one of the darker ones. Now, Valfero has a 5 watt laser diode attached, and I was running at 80%, and that's kind of a personal preference. I don't typically like running my machines at 100% if I can avoid it. Just for laser life and safety, I always worry about overheating, especially in the California heat during the summer, but it came out pretty good. Now, something else is that it has a really dark and gray, but it did not penetrate the surface of the MDF, at least not really noticeable when you run your finger over it. You can kind of tell, but it mainly burned the surface almost like a printer. So that is the Alfero Laser 2. Last thing about the Alfero Laser 2 before we move on is that I did the burn or I did the engrave in Lightburn. Um, the only two software supported for Alfero is Laser Gerbil and Lightburn, so I used Lightburn. I have a licensed copy of it, and that's what I kind of prefer using now for it. And if you run the laser too fast, there is a safety mechanism that will kick on and stop the machine and generate error. You actually have to go into Lightburn, into the G-code settings, and disable, and uh, or at least modify the top speed allowed. And that's how I was able to get this. So it's not natively available, even though they advertise it. That's why I made that modification. That's my justification um, for it. But like I said, pretty fast. I think it clocked in around 9, 10 minutes. Once again, I'll have the correct time on the screen. But pretty good looking image. And from the cheapest laser of the bunch too, which we'll talk about prices later on. Okay, so next up is the X-Tool D1 which is also a very nice engrave. In fact, I think that the X-Tool has the finest detail out of any of the various lasers. Now, the X-Tool, I have a 10-watt laser diode attached to this, and to try to get it down closer to the 5-watt comparison, I ran this at 50%, and even at 50%, it penetrated the surface, and you can actually feel the texture of the material being burned away in these various areas. So anywhere you see a dark, it's actually below the normal surface of the MDF. And it is a great looking engrave. Not quite as in dark, not quite as dark as the FR Laser 2, but still very, very good looking. And the top speed of this one was 180 millimeters a second. So roughly about what 70 millimeters a second less than the Alfero, which is really strange because it clocked in around 18 minutes, no, I'm sorry, it clocked in around, I believe, 30 minutes, all the correct time displayed on the screen for the engrave. So quite a bit longer in order to get this quality. And that number is locked off by their LaserBox software. I'm pretty sure, I'm almost positive that you could run the machine faster if you unlock it, maybe using a software like Lightburn, but that was locked off by their software, that's what I ran it at, and that is the result. Next up is the Glowforge, which looks really good. It's the darkest of the bunch as well, but it's also one of the highest powered. It did penetrate the surface, it is a nice engrave. Um, I think that a little bit less, or maybe equal to the X-Tool in terms of how far down it penetrated the surface. Let's see if I can get a, a better up close view. I might use another camera to get closer to look at some of the detail. But it still looks really good. The top speed of this was around a thousand. But here's the problem is Glowforge has a weird system of numbering where it says a thousand or top speed, but they don't tell you a thousand what. And this clocked in at almost nineteen minutes. So I don't think that's a thousand millimeters a second. It must be something else based on that time. Uh, we could probably run some calculations to to compare, but pretty nice. But it's also the most expensive out of the bunch, so I would hope it would have a decent image quality. But once again, it's got that higher time as well. And finally, the last one, the kind of the dark horse of the bunch in some ways, is the K40 laser. Now, based on my perception of these, this is the poorest quality, and that could slightly be on my end for not having 100% focused the best, but it has penetrated and has the deepest engrave out of all of them. 
And one issue that I have with my K40 machine is I can't get a really good output reading of the power. I think it comes out to about 5 milliamps, but the dial is not 100% accurate, but it's around 5 milliamps of the top output for this carve. And the software that I use for this is called K40 Whisperer, which is a open source software that somebody from Scorchworks has developed. And this is running at 400 millimeters a second, which is really, really fast, and ended up with about a 10 minute engrave time, which is really fast. About equal to a Faro, which is strange because there were different speeds dialed in, but their time to engrave are very, very similar. So if you want to go fast, and precision and absolute image quality is not 100% necessary, then this isn't a bad way to go. And just for fun, I actually ran the K40 a little bit faster because it has a potential faster speed. This was the initial one that I did. And this came in about a minute faster. Not as dark, but still pretty respectable for that time. So the fastest of the bunch really came out to be the K40, which I was not expecting. So now for the difficult question. Which one is best? And that term best is really difficult when you have a field of items so different from each other, especially in power output and even the technology used to produce the image. But if I had to pick one that I like the best, just in terms of image quality, it would be the X-Tool. I think it had the finest detail in the engrave and still penetrated the surface, which I kind of like, as opposed to just darkening the surface. But if that's what you're going for, that's okay too. The overall engrave time is not ideal, but I think that could be sped up with different software. I think that they have it locked down just to be conservative and to make sure that the machine is operating under optimal conditions. But I think that could be sped up. As far as speed, if you're into production and need to produce a lot of something, then the Alfaro Laser 2 is really the way to go. I think it's fast. I think it's reliable. It worked really well and the image quality is still really good. And compared to most of the machines I've used, it has produced the most consistent dark values compared to anything that I currently own without any additional modifications like using baking soda or I think it's borax, you know, any of those other modifications that you could apply to the surface of the material to bring out the darks a little bit more. So if you already have a high powered laser in your shop, such as a CO2 laser, whether it's a Glowforge, a Muse, or even a K40, having the Alfaro in addition to that might be an interesting option for you to explore. But then I also have to address the K40 because the K40 really surprised me. When I looked online for the various speeds that you could potentially use for the machine, I saw speeds as fast as a thousand millimeters per second. I'm not trying to find the tail end of diminishing returns here, so I wasn't really keen on pushing the machine more than what I usually feel comfortable with, especially because I'm already seeing a degradation in um, image quality loss when you push the machine faster, um, especially because I probably didn't have it focused 100% accurately, but still surprised nonetheless. And if the K40 is your cup of tea, then go for it. It's really open to modification and making it your own. Um, they're still really widely available, and I think that they're going between four and $500 now, depending on where you can find them. If you are interested in any of these machines, I have affiliate codes down below. Any of those purchases do help the channel, and it's greatly appreciated. The Alfaro, the X-Tool, the Glowforge, the K40. Find the one that best suits your needs and go for it. I'd love to see what all of you create. That about wraps up this test. Not quite the results I was expecting and I'm still confused by some of the outcomes of these. But ultimately, you should always be choosing the result and the laser that best fits your needs. Thank you for making it this far in the video. Remember that your view times and watching the videos in the back catalog do a lot to help out the channel. If you'd like to help out the channel further, we have a Patreon with different rewards if you're in a position to do so. We also have a shop with shirts and other cool Geek Builders themed merchandise for you to check out. So in the meantime, don't forget to design, make, and play. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Oh, and if you have ideas for other laser tests and other comparisons, let me know. I should have some other lasers coming in to possibly compare and throw in the mix. Let me know, and I'll try to test those out for you, too. See you later.